all the researchers, I went to all the conferences, and then I came across some research from Dr. William Courtney that showed that when you juice cannabis, when you eat cannabis raw, uh, it's the superfood of superfoods. It helps our bodies find homeostasis. So I, I looked for around, no one had it in the marketplace. It's called CBDA. And so I was like, well, I'm in California and I've grown cannabis before, so I will grow some hemp cannabis with high in CBDA. And that's what I did. Welcome to the Miracle Plant Podcast, the show that inspires, promotes, and gives you a daily dose of inspiration from the people who have used cannabis to change their lives in extraordinary ways. Here's your host, Justin Benton. Welcome back, everybody. This week's episode is The Cave, and Dr. Bill Janishek is going to tell you all about it. So every time I see clips of that movie, I just find them that's so inspirational. Uh, and I think that's why if you looked at all those clips, they're all classics. And there's something that you that generations will generally go over and be inspired, uplifted. You know, those are the feel good movies. Those are the good date movies. But why are they? It's because it's because of the hero's journey. And in each of those movies, we're going through that journey and we see ourselves in that journey that's why we are doing this whole um this whole this whole production for you so last last episode we talked about you're finally getting into your extraordinary world you know we start off in the or in the ordinary world that we just call normal we have this call to adventure that thing that's inside us or that things that's thrust upon us initially there's a refusal of a call where you say, no, I can't do that. I'm not good enough. I'm not great at it. And by God, it, people don't like me. And then eventually you'll come over, you meet a mentor who thinks that you can. He kind of shows you to the, the guardian of the gate where you cross into the, to the next world or the extraordinary world. And then you have your tests, your allies and your enemies that we covered last time. Now there's no turning back. We're now entering one segment is what they would uh, Joseph Campbell explain approaching the inmost cave. And he, Joseph Campbell has a, a, quaint, a famous quote that says that the cave you fear to enter holds the treasure that you seek. And this is a portion of it where we're getting transformational. We've gone through, we're in the, the, the extraordinary world. This is Dorothy is in Oz now. And she's met her, the Tin Man and the Cowardly Lion and the Scarecrow. And they're on this journey. There's no turning back. But she still thinks like the little girl from Kansas. We go through the same thing. When we approach the inmost cave, it's when we're starting to get our plan together to for our big conquering thing, the thing that we're, we need to fight through. But this portion, to me is the most transformational because the hero doesn't always win the big battle. He'll fight it, but he doesn't always win it. And the difference is what happens in the cave and the cave that Joseph Campbell talks about, like I said, it's an internal battle. You have parts of your, your, your being, you grew up in this world where they told you that you have to act a certain way. Don't dream so big. You know, kids are, don't touch that, don't reach for that. And now you're having, you're in this other world. And so there's a conflict and there's, this is more of an internal conflict. You go into this cave, you know, men always have to go to their man cave because that's where they go to settle out the world and, and they have to figure things out. It's the same thing. This came from uh, Joseph Campbell's work is you have to go inside and whatever's holding you back, whatever conflicting uh, theories or thoughts that you have are going to be resolved in the inmost cave. The second part of the inmost cave is once you, you're you kind of thinking through this stuff, he's like, oh, you know, I never thought I was this good and I couldn't, I couldn't figure this out, but I think I can. Then there's the second part about where you grab your plan. And you say, all right, there's no turning back. I'm going through. 
and you're still afraid to go on because you're thinking like the old person, but you're on this journey and you're all in. And this is where courage comes in. And courage doesn't mean you're not afraid. It means that you go through anyways. My favorite example in all the clips is in Rocky. Love Rocky, big Rocky fan. If you've seen that, Rocky, and you should have if you're a good American, um, you're going to have to come back over. The night before Rocky was supposed to fight Apollo Creed, he went to the he went to the, the gymnasium or, or the, the event place where they were going to have it. And he walked around. No one was there. And he looked around. He saw the promoter. He said, well, you know, my my shorts are different in the poster than then what he goes, well, Rocky, it really doesn't matter. And Rocky came home and he he sat on the bed next to Adrian. He laid down and she woke up because this was late at night. And he said, I can't do it. He says, I can't beat him because I am. I'm not even in his league. And she said, well, what are you going to do? He said, if I can just last if i can just go the distance he says then i'm going to know that i'm really something and not just another bum from the neighborhood and it's at that point when he comes in his hero's journey that he comes out of the cage or uh, out of the cave because he's he's hit that internal conflict with himself about like i'm just a bum from the neighborhood to like gonna screw that i'm gonna go and do this and he was scared shitless because he knew that he was gonna get this ass handed to him but he just went out and that was became his only thing was to to not only show up but to fight through that and that's what happens when we get into the inmost cave so if you're going on your journey and there's a part where we and we all have it okay i'm here i'm like oh shit what did i get myself into you can overcome that. You just need, you know, 10, 20 seconds of courage to kind of push through and find out who, what you're really made of. And um, that's what we really want. We need to be challenged to step up to the best version of ourselves. And that decision happens in the inmost cave. So with that said, I want you guys to take a look at that. we got two great guests coming on to share their uh their hero's journey and how things have affected them so joe i want to take it from there and just introduce our wonderful guests absolutely thank you bill and again as we've gone through this i'm sure everybody's going to sit back and say i do recognize the hero's journey in my own life and so the two guests we're going to bring up right now you're going to hear a lot of what they went through but you're going to hear yourself in their hero's journey. So I'm excited. Two friends of ours, friends of the show, friends of One Life Productions, right? We have Bob Donnell. Bob Donnell is the founder of Everything Next Level. He focuses on global, personal, and professional development, right? He's an author. My apologies. Yeah, speaker. It's like, I can't talk. Yes, I'm choked up because it's Bob, <laughs> right? So, uh, yeah, so he's an author. He is a speaker. He's a results strategist, which is somebody who's going to strategize with you to get results. It's amazing. With 30 years of diverse industry experience, okay, and he can help. He passionately aids individuals and companies in achieving desired outcomes and elevating performance. So he's a good person for you to attach yourself to. As soon as you get off of this, I'd say jump over to our website that you see down below, go to the word guest speaker on Bob's page, boom, click it and connect yourself with Bob. Okay. Another individual that we're excited to bring on board here today is Justin Benton. Justin loves helping other people, seeing them realize their potential and being change, being an actual change for good. Okay. He discovered the power of a miracle plant in its raw form when it brought his child back to him from the fog, okay? He committed his life's work to pay it forward by educating the world about his family's story and how the hemp cannabis plant can help billions with a B, right, of people around the world with its seemingly 
endless uses. So here is Bob Donnell up on the screen. I got Justin on the screen. Justin's out on location. Hello, yep. Justin. Yes. Nice. Welcome, gentlemen. Guys, thank you so much for coming awesome. in. Okay. The goal for today is what? To share your hero's journey. And again, at once everybody's to this point in the episodes, everybody realizes we go through a lot of heroes journeys. And so I want to focus on just one of them. So Justin, I want to go to you live in the field and say, Justin, can you tell us your hero's journey? So, uh, no, it's just really cool to be here. Uh, the calling the hero's journey. Um, you know, for those of you that know my story or don't, uh, you know, I was kind of living a jet setters life. I've always been in the sales and marketing world and, you know, a lot like Joe and, and, uh, life was good. We had our second child. He was a healthy, happy kid around three. We took a routine visit to the doctor's office. And the next day we realized that uh, he no longer was healthy or happy. Uh, he actually kind of went into his own little world, a little fog or, or comatose, even if you will, and withdrew. And my wife took him in for another, uh, you know, a diagnosis to see what was wrong. And uh, after the diagnosis, they said that he had developed severe autism. And so I had never, I had heard of autism. I had heard of like movies about it, but I didn't know any, really anything about it. And so my life that was on this trajectory of, you know, sales and marketing and playing golf all over the world. And, and you know, the two, uh, two kids in the white picket fence, all of this came to a, uh, an immediate halt. And I had to figure out how could I how can I get my son's health back? How do I, how do I restore my son's health? And, uh, you know, I, I fortunately was raised holistically, so I wasn't going to play gerbil with Western medicine to feed my kid a bunch of pills. Um, I flew my mom out who, uh, was, you know, who raised me in that nature. She was actually a school psychologist with 25 years of experience working with children with special needs. She gave me her diagnosis and she agreed. Uh, and that was, easily the biggest gut punch of my life and you know at the time there was no cure there was no healing to autism it was just something you had to deal with cope it grit and bear it deal with it and to me i wasn't gonna i wasn't good enough for me my son was healthy and he no longer was so i'm his only dad so i had to figure out how could i mm -hmm. restore his health first thing we did was food was his medicine we cleaned up his diet the american diet's the most toxic diet on the planet in fact, uh, Italy just said any of all the food that we eat, they won't allow all the artificial flavors, sweeteners, all that junk that is in our American diet. Uh, we got rid of it from Shea. Uh, I cleaned up his diet back to organic fruits and vegetables and juicing. We all know what we should be eating. It's a lot. Sometimes it's more convenient or things like that to, to eat things that taste good or quicker because we have this fast paced lifestyle. But for Shea, we needed to restore his health. So food was his medicine. We cleaned up his diet. Um, made sure we got rid of the gluten, the dairy, the just the junk that's in our in our food system right now. And uh, fortunately, through that, we were able to get his diagnosis from severe to moderate. And then, but the, here's where the calling comes in. So we that that was as good as we could get, as far as we knew. Cleaning up his diet was as far as we could go, and I just wasn't going to give up. I didn't know where to go. There were some hopeless nights. I didn't I didn't know who to turn to. There weren't any doctors or research or anything out there about how you could overcome an autism diagnosis. Uh, and so I just continued to look and, and pray and think of what could it possibly be. And it happened on a, at a chance meeting with a buddy of mine. Uh, we were at a, a 50s diner having breakfast. And he said he was talking with a doctor friend that was making a CBD pen. And I was like, what's a CBD pen? Is that like, you know, Seinfeld with the astronaut pen that writes upside down? I didn't know what he was talking about. He says, no, a CBD pen is a, is a roll-on that you roll on where the pain is for like inflammation on your knee or, or your back. And, and I said, well, that's cool, but why is he talking to you? And he says, well, because I'm a cannabis farmer and CBD comes from a strain of, of cannabis called hemp, yeah. which is high in CBD. And so I was like, dude, I inhaled and exhaled in college and I know plenty about the plant and I have never heard of CBD in my life. This is like eight years ago. And so what is the first thing we all do? We go to Dr. Google, type it in. And one of the first articles I found when I scrolled down was that CBD was helping to relieve uh, and, and eliminate seizures from children with epilepsy. And so that was my lead. That was my calling. That was like, okay, if it's helping children neurologically proven over and over again since the 1970s with Dr. Raphael and Shulam, that it's, that it's eliminating or, or severely, severely reducing epilepsy and seizures in children, 
this is my best lead. And that's when I went all in. I, I tried some of the products on the market. They didn't work the way that we had hoped, but I wasn't going to give up because it made too much sense. If there was a plant out there that was helping children with epilepsy get rid of seizures, this was my best lead. So I just dove head first and got my hair wet and in the deep end. And I flew around the world, met with all the researchers. I went to all the conferences. And then I came across some research from Dr. William Courtney that showed that when you juice cannabis, when you eat cannabis raw, uh, it's the superfood of superfoods. It helps our bodies find homeostasis. So I, I looked for around. No one had it in the marketplace. It's called CBDA. And so I was like, well, I'm in California and I've grown cannabis before. So I will grow some hemp cannabis with high in CBDA. And that's what I did. We were at a pumpkin patch. My son was uh, having a, uh, you know, an episode of major tantrum, uh, you know, hands over his ears, hiding it uh, underneath a, a bench. And my, I looked at my wife and we had just cold pressed some hemp I had grown earlier and uh, we gave it to him. And literally within 30 seconds, he snapped out of the tantrum and ran off and, and uh, went and picked a pumpkin with his sister. And, uh, you know, the grandparents were there, the aunts and the uncles and everybody. And they were like, what was that? What did you give him? And I said, it's just some raw hemp that we gave him. And so I'm happy to report he's no longer uh, has the diagnosis. I'm actually at his water polo game, as you can see the school bus going by. So he's, he's playing right now over here, and uh, we got a couple of matches today. And he's excelling academically uh, in sports, uh, musically, and our dreams came true. So we paid it forward to, to reach a billion people by 2025 about the power of this miracle plant in the raw form. And uh, that was the calling for me. It was what what... I didn't know what I needed. I didn't know what to do, but I know I needed to try everything I possibly could, regardless of what the odds were, just like you were saying with Rocky. You know, it didn't matter because I was his only dad and I had to figure out how could I restore my son's health. And uh, when you just go all in and you, you operate in faith instead of fear, uh, the answers will appear if you stay dedicated to it. A lot of us know Think and Grow Rich with Napoleon Hill and, uh, you know, his son, Claire, that was born with no ears. Uh, which brought tears to my eyes when the first time I read that chapter in Think and Grow Rich. He was born with no ears, and they said his son, of course, would never be able to hear. He doesn't even have the instruments to hear. Well, Napoleon did not want to hear that, did not believe that. He, he continued to say and, and, and stay positive and know that one day his son would hear. And lo and behold, in his early 20s, a doctor came up to them with a experimental, like, research, uh, you know, kind of surgery. And, uh, and Claire uh, Hill spoke or heard and was able to speak and so again i just that calling is there for all of us and like bill said earlier it's not a matter of whether or not we're afraid or scared but we operate in faith and that's you know the the brave people who operate in, in courage are just as scared as the people who don't and so again you just operate in faith move forward and uh yeah super super stoked to be here share the story and uh what a cool thing you guys are doing here well man that's amazing and um I, I've known your story, and that's what actually attracted me to want you here as well, is because it, it's not even your story. You, you talk about some people have this dream inside them, and, some, and sometimes it's thrust upon them. You know, this obviously was thrust to you. You're not going to leave your son kind of hanging. You're going to do everything that you can. And for everybody listening right now, I want you to know, like, Justin's work, like, I carry his CBD exclusively and I get so many people. Oh, I mean, they're all try my product, my product. There's nothing that, that the cold press product that you have is unbelievable. And I've been doing the same thing with my daughter is and I, actually, I called you up on, on that. We we're working on her ADHD and her spectrum disorder like that. And I'll let you know that it's, she's amazing. She's been doing We'll see tons of different. Pick up our diet. We're doing some neurological stuff with it, but it was the, the the because of your hero's journey, the thing that where you kind of put the, the flag in the ground said, "I'm going here. I don't care." You know, it affected me personally, but we know that you're going to affect a million people uh, around the world, and I appreciate that. But I want people to listen about. Justin's story again. I talked when Amy Lee and Loa were on here. You guys are all special people, but you're not so extraordinary that that the people listening can't find their own calling and do the same thing. You've got to 
find that faith and keep going, that 20 seconds of courage just to keep keep going and have faith. And your true reason for being on, on this earth is going to be revealed to you at the end. So thanks, Justin. I really appreciate that. Love it. Thanks for having me, guys. Thanks for listening to today's show. To check out more great cannabis podcasts, go to podconnects.com. Here's a preview of one of our other shows. I'm Joyce Gerber, the creator and host of the award-winning podcast, The Canna Mom Show. And we are on a mission to enhance the impact women have on this industry as business professionals, healthcare providers, policy advocates, caregivers, moms, by sharing and preserving their stories of love and kindness, wisdom, and hope. I am so grateful to have found my tribe of Canna podcasters right here on Pod. Connex, and look forward to our work of crushing the stigma around cannabis and caregivers and building this new industry together.